gamers and gamers, and welcome to turn number 16.4, the British Commonwealth and the Free French. Now, as you all know, the uh, Free French and the British Commonwealth don't actually share the same turn, so certain things that you'll see this turn, well, it makes sense because it's not on the same turn. All right, <laughs> before we get into that, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. There's a Soviet sub here that's, uh, we've, we've continuously, all three of us, or two of us, I suppose, the Soviets missed rolling for the anti-submarine warfare, and then also the... The Japanese, when their turn came, they also forgot it. So now it's up to me not to forget this one, and hopefully I don't. <laughs> All right, and what else do we got going on? Well, uh, before we get into that, I want to take a quick dive into the map, some of the map features. And here we have a battle marker, the Battle of the Hilltops. Now, I talked about this last time, but I just wanted to show you guys a nice, fancy little token there. The Battle of the Hilltops, won by Hilltop Pillbox, where his Soviet forces came and, and with immense pressure pushed down into the southern Iran, capturing it from the Allies. It was a fairly big battle, a huge battle occurred there, and a very successful one for the Soviets. A glorious victory was fought and won, so good for them. That was pretty good. Now there's a couple other battle markers out here. The Battle of the Admirals between the USA forces, navies, and the Japanese Navy. They battled it out there. This one's, of course, named after Admiral Seabass, another respected member of the community. Uh, I believe he's done some work for HBG as well too, and just has a great channel. Check it out as well. It's uh, one of those ones that um, kind of, in my opinion, flies a little bit under the radar. For some reason, it doesn't show up on my feed as much, but definitely a worthwhile one to check out. And the Lucky Liam Turkey Shoot. Now, this one is not in any kind of mockery of any attack. It was, uh, it was an unfortunate attack by the Japanese that they just got diced. So the Lucky Liam Turkey Shoot, named after uh, in World War II, I believe there's the, the Turkey Shoot or the Great, what was it called? The Great Turkey Shoot? I can't remember, but there was a battle occurred by that name where the Japanese airplanes were just falling out of the sky. So this one's named after Liam, with a Polish back name, last name, and I'm going to be butchering it, Liam Berezowski, or something like that. So my apologies, Liam. And so this is named after him, a, a commentator and subscriber to the channel, and, you know, I, I quite value his opinion. I always look out for him on the forums. Uh, on the comment thread anyways he always pops up here and there everywhere with some pertinent wisdom <laughs> right on so those are the two battles there's a few other ones odds and ends here i've dropped off like in london there's one what did i call it the battle the fall of the king you know in recognition of panzer king and how london fell to the german hordes so there it is the fall of the king now there's probably going to be a few more popping up here and there but for the most part much of the allied strength is spent and so most of what you see now is just the kickings and the strugglings of a dying man. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, don't, uh, don't read anything into my tone. I'm having a lot of fun enjoying every minute of this. So let's take a look at our economic table and go on from there. So here's our purchases. Now, um, first of all, this one here, there's four bucks right here. Now, I was told that I actually got four bucks refund back because um, the Germans didn't raid me as much as I thought they had. So that's what this is there, so four bucks. So with them I'm getting 20 bucks, I'm getting 10 militia, anti-aircraft, infantry, and here's seven bucks, that's gonna get me a minor factory completed and built in uh, Egypt, Eastern Egypt, yes. And with Far East Command, I'm getting them three militia, an anti-aircraft, and uh, upgrading militia to a major. I can't remember what that one stands for now. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Okay, here we have uh, for the Anzac, one transport and one infantry, saving one buck. And we're getting here, what is this? Eight bucks for a fighter and then leasing one uh, buck to the Free French. Now the Free French could get up to two because their income is now at four, so very minuscule. But that's that's what they're doing this turn. And they're also getting that, well, you get our economic role. That is it, and I wish I remember what that was for. I'm sure it had some significance, but nonetheless, let's just press on. Okay, with our combat, there are a few combat moves occurring here and there everywhere. Let's just do them. There's nothing too major. There's going to be a combat here. Now, oh, you know what? Let's do our tech, and then let's bring the dice tray to the other side, because we should probably roll for that submarine before we too also forget. Okay, so we're going for improved factories with our Ottawa Major Factory tech roll, and here it is. Seven, so we're right on the money. <laughs> so we got stage two improved factories. Okay, now I'm going to grab that dice tray because we do not want to forget this. And we'll carry it to uh, the appropriate section of the board to roll for that over there, that unit, that submarine, our anti-submarine roll. So what we need to do is roll a two. So here we go. Oh, 
Oh, it was almost a three, but not quite. No cigar. Okay, back to our combat moves. So you saw that we're moving that heavy bomber. It's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's still got, uh, what has it got? Six, seven, eight. It has eight moves, so it has sufficient to get where it needs to go. So that's one combat move there. Now over here, we're gonna do some more combat as well. One, two, yeah, we're gonna do some more combat as well. And so that will be this Gurkha and these three infantry are walking across to Cochin, China. That is the goal. And they're gonna be, they're gonna be accompanied by this tactical bomber. I think we could spare it in this fight. And then I have these two transports. Well, hold on, before we do that, so we are actually going to zoom up to our subs here. These subs are going to go down south and engage this destroyer. With them is coming this Anzac fighter. It's going to go and attack that. We're also bringing in some extra units. We're bringing in these units as well, just to attack that. And we're going to come in here with these two transports. And we're going to pick up from Hong Kong. Now, I have this tile here for all of Hong Kong stuff. So we're going to pick up three infantry and one anti-aircraft, and they're going to be dropped off in Hunan. So Hunan is here next to Nanking, and we're going to pick that up for the Chinese. Kind of liberate a little bit of territory for them. That is the plan. It may be a mistake, but nonetheless, we're just going to go ahead and do it. So that's our two attacks. That's just going to be, that's only going to occur if this battle is successful, which I expect it will be, but there's always that slight chance things will go otherwise. Now, I keep feeling like I'm missing something somewhere, but I do not see what it would be. So let us, one, yeah, I think that is it for our combat, except for one up here. Now, it's a pretty basic one. We're sending two militia up north, and we're going with our four fighters. We're going to fly up there and attempt to take down that there, um, that there airborne leftover <laughs> in that area. That is the goal, that is the plan. One, two, three, four, five, five, uh, six, 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 seven. All right, so that's what we're going to do there. Now, um, that is it, guys. That is all our combat. I can't see anything else that would need to be done, so those are our combats. Let's actually start with this one up there. So it's going to be, I'm not even going to need that many dice for this one. I'm going to roll out for, I'm going to roll for the, there's two jet fighters and two regular fighters going into there. So here's the two jets. Oh, miss. And two regular fighters. Miss again. And the two militia going in there for one. Nothing on the first round. And here's the defense at two. So everybody missed. Round two. Two jet fighters. And there's our hit that we need. So we succeeded in recapturing Scotland. Let's see what the response is. One at two. Miss. All right. Scotland is ours. Next up, we go to Madagascar. I feel like I'm missing one crucial battle somewhere, but if I am, I can't see where it could be. Here we go, Madagascar. Let's park this here. Now we have five dice rolls as success or one or less. So, ah, hopefully we get one. We got one hit. So there it is, a two. So Madagascar has no defensive capability at this point. So that is it. That is all. And... Now we have one more attack occurring. Well, two more attacks, sorry. Yeah, two more attacks. Um, there might actually be one more. Sorry, I did not line this one up, but I do have these two Marines. One, two, no, that's why. Okay, I always keep forgetting. So this one here, the reason I didn't put a flame out there is I keep forgetting that there's no naval base here. And so this transport can't actually hit anything within range. It's kind of ridiculously positioned. Okay, so that's not going anywhere. So this battle occurring here, now there is a destroyer present, so that submarine does Ah, uh, no, it's no, yep. Yeah, our submarines don't get first strike, and so it's just a clean battle here. So we're gonna, that's uh, a bit crowded. Okay, we're gonna roll for our two, our heavy cruiser and our fighter. Those are both at sixes. Let's see if we can wipe them out with our sixes. Uh, there's two hits, and now one for the defense is gonna be at four. And they got a hit as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off one of our submarines. Let's take off the Anzac one. I like the I like the Anzac one a bit more, but I like having the same color. It's uh, much easier to remember what's what. So this battle is done. 
All right, now we have one more battle occurring here in Cochin, China. So we have our tactical bomber is coming in, and that's going to be our big money maker. This one. So we have our money maker, and everything else is rolling out one because we're crossing a river. So I'm going to grab us another colored dice. Okay, so I have a uh, four regular at one and one at seven. So one hit, and that is all we have. Now they have two defensive units at two. Miss. So they're down to one unit, and here's our second round. We have another hit, and for their response, one at two, and they miss at four. So Cochin China is now in the hands of the French. The Free French have taken over Cochin China. All right. Okay, so now I think we need to put our stuff back in our positions. So let's see. This uh, Anzac came one, two, three. It's still got two more moves. One, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to land him in Hong Kong. And then we're going to grab what else do we got here? Or right, this aircraft here, so we need to back off a little bit. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got two more movements. 5-6, so he's also going to land in Hong Kong. It's nice that we have Hong Kong, it's a kind of a handy little position. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. So that's two, alright. While we're here, we're going to do some non-combat moves, or strategic naval moves. So this unit here is going to go pick up these, and this is going to be a strategic naval move for our unit. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Two, actually, one, two, three. Four, five. I thought we could get as far as Formosa. One, two, one, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, we can. I just counted it wrong. As far as Formosa, and we're dropping them off in Formosa. We can't drop them off there. It just, uh, just doesn't work. So that's what is occurring there. So we have three transports here and a small little minor fleet and a submarine there as well. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now let's pan our view to this side of things. We have this uh, heavy strat bomber, so it came one, two, three, four, five, and it still has a movement range of three. So one, two, three, can't do it, so one, two, hmm, yeah, I'd like it to get closer, one, two, three, can't get very far. So I'm going to just deposit it here in South Africa. While we are here, we're going to look at our fleet. So our fleet is in a tough position. The Italians can go to war this turn if they chose to, and they'd have sufficient forces, maybe not to kill my, uh, kill off the Royal Navy, but definitely to give it a hard time. So we're going to evacuate out of this position and go one, two, just over here. And so that is this whole fleet here. And we're also going to bring some units with us. We're going to bring, who are we going to bring? Two infantry and an artillery. Let's say three infantry and an artillery. There we have, and we're going to drop them off in Aden. All right, so what's remaining is going back into Eastern Egypt, including this cavalry. I think we might want the cavalry here. So I have infantry, cavalry, three, four, five militia sitting here. Okay, with Aachenlacht. All right. <laughs> okay, while we're here, we're going to move this unit here to that position. And we're going to rail one infantry to Belgian Congo. So that's what that looks like. <clears throat> Next, we're going to pan over to here. And we have this fleet available to us. Hmm. Yeah, that fleet's available to us, so we'll think about that for a second. We need to move these guys back off their movement, and we're going to move them back to British Midlands. We want to be kind of in a safe position. Uh, you know what? We're going to move two down here. And the remaining two are going to stay up there. That way we can kind of defend our fleet and defend the northern part of England as well. There we go. Okay, so this turn we've acquired one buck for the British Commonwealth. The Germans have gone down by one buck. The CCP have gone down by two bucks. The Nationalists have gone up by two bucks. And the Free French have gone up to five. Oops. And then the Japanese have gone up, I've uh, gone down one space as well, so the Japanese sit at 23. I think that's what it looks like on my map. Okay.
Plans, plans, plans. Hmm. All right. So we're going to make some more movements here. This torpedo boat destroyer is going to go one, two, three to this position, and this one's going to go one, two, three, and go on escort duty over here. Which, and by here, I mean right there. <laughs> okay. And then the last fleet we have to really think about is this guy here. And where will they go? Uh, actually, we got a couple more things to think about. Hmm, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, three. One, one, two, three. That's a pretty decent position, to be honest. I'm pretty happy with that one. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that one. This is kind of a crucial spot, this coast right here. It's not a great spot, but it's a pretty good spot. Um, you know, it's uh, it does the job anyways. It does the job. Okay, so we're going to do some movements here with this one. And this uh, aircraft is going to go one, two... Well, it's simply going to land here in Cairo. And then we have... You know what? Actually, I don't think it is. This one is actually not going to land in Cairo. It's going to stay up here on this carrier. This Canadian aircraft is going to fly across and land in the British Midlands. It's got the range. And then we have these three infantry, and they're going to be railed across Canada to the other side. Because we have a threat here appeared, a very clever move by Panzer King coming to Alaska. Now, luckily that does not impact our victory points, because it's not part of the United States homeland territory. As odd as that sounds, it isn't. <laughs> and that takes care of that. I feel like I am missing something somewhere on the board, but... You know, a person can't cover everything, and that's just the way it is. So let's start placing our stuff on the board. First, we're going to place our Anzac stuff. And the Anzac stuff specifically is going to be our tra uh, transport there, and our factory is going to produce one infantry here as well. So that's what's occurring there. Now the FEC, if you all recall, I was upgrading a militia and getting out artillery. And getting three inf uh, three um, regular dudes, uh, three militia. So I have an anti-aircraft there. I'm placing three militia down here. And I'm also going to upgrade one of the militia into regular infantry. All right. So that's what that looks like. And now we move on to the next one, which will be just a short pan to this direction. And we need to start thinking about defense of... Well, a few odds and ends, a few crucial spots are victory point places. So here we're going to be placing one militia. I have ten militia total, so there goes one. Oops. Our second one is going to go here, Western Egypt. We just need a little bit to shore up a few defenses. I'm going to place one over here, so that brings us up to four militia here in Gibraltar. Four militia in Gibraltar, and we're going to go up to England. England is where we get a pile of units, so I have a few left in hand. So we are going to get three, three militia here in British Midlands, and we're going to get three here in Northern England. So that leaves, by my count, I still have one militia left to place on the board somewhere, and so where I will place that one is kind of up for debate. I was thinking in here in Aiden, but you know Aiden, I don't know if it needs it anymore. I think Aiden's pretty well secure. Um, there's a few odds and then a few odds places that a person wants it to be at. Oh, I remember what that dice was for before. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's uh, quickly put it off somewhere here. Gibraltar can only get one. Mm -hmm. Gold Coast is worth one. I think I think we might just... Uh, we're going to save this and put it in our place unit box. That's always a viable strategy to do too, right? You don't have to place everything if need be. And I feel kind of confident where we have everything now, so I think that's where we'll place that. Okay, so that one die roll... Well, I'll tell you guys in a second, but that's when it comes to collecting come face. Okay, so we are also building a factory here in Eastern Egypt. And we are also going to be building in South Africa. It's going to get built one infantry down south here. And we're building one anti-aircraft up north there. 
I should also non-combat move the existing anti-aircraft down south to that position. So there's one in British Midlands and one in the northern bit of England there. So that's what's occurring over there. Fantastic. So let me just quickly bend your ear on a few odd and end little tricks. Actually, let's collect... Oh, we got one more unit to place on the board. And it's going to be this Canadian unit. And the Canadian unit is going to go using that airdrome of democracy. We can actually place it here. By rights, so that's where it's gonna go. Okay, let's get to collect income phase. So, this is all gonna be cleaned up because I have it nicely organized already. One buck is gonna go across to the free French. Now, um, I'm gonna roll for wartime economy and then I'll explain what my thinking is with that this black dice that just sits there. Five bucks, so very minimal money <laughs> this turn, very minimal. <laughs> Alright, so with five bucks, I can't do much with that. Um, this buck here is to represent me shifting income from one place to another place. I have Dutch Suriname here with one buck, and I can, by rights, switch that income from going from the Atlantic side to be collected by the FEC. So that's what that is all about. <clears throat> I've already incorporated it into this upcoming math. I just need to change it here on the board, I believe. So I'm now at 15 for the Atlantic side and nine for the Pacific side. Okay, so here is my income, and here is the bonus money. That's what that stands for. Here's income, bonus, income, bonus. If you need me to tell you all what that is, I'm sure you can read it on the camera, but nonetheless, that's what it is. Okay, and uh, with five bucks extra, I'm gonna do one and four here. This is all just stands for one. So the greens and the blues and the whites are all ones. This is just stands for the wartime economy. It helped me kind of pre-plan a little bit instead of freezing and panic in a moment. So that's what's happening. Um, the bulk of it went over there. Okie dokes. Now we're going to move on to the free French. Just because it's much, much easier to do it all together than doing it separate. But keep in mind, it is a separate turn onto its own. So we have Five, six, seven, eight bucks to spend, and I actually haven't grabbed them their units yet, but here we go. I think I have them pretty handy. So here's six, seven, eight. Eight units. Uh, sorry, two infantry and one militia. Combat moves. Well, we're allowed to do this combat move now. We're going to come to this sea zone with these two infantry. Now, I spoke with Panzer King, and he says this submarine is going to rise up and challenge me coming into the sea zone. So we already have one combat. These guys, their intent is to drop off there if they're successful in this battle. So that's what's occurring there. Now we are also going to be battling here. And this one will have to be waiting on my opponent to decide what he wants to do. But I'm going to move these seven infantry to that position to combat in Iraq. Now we, uh, yeah, that's, that's essentially all that's going on. Uh, combating in Iraq. Great, 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 great. I can't think of, they don't have too many other units across the board. I think that's basically it. A few bits and drabs here and there, but uh, yeah, those are the two big combat units that we're doing. So um, this one here has to wait for, uh, has to wait for Hilltop. There's gonna be, oh, sorry, one last thing. I do have a fighter here in Gibraltar. So it goes one, two, three, four. Four there, it's still got one more movement. We could probably land it, yeah. Probably land it here in Transjordan is the plan. I think that's the plan. I may land it somewhere a little bit more safe. Yeah, that is a jet fighter too. So on that note, I remember what this is for. It was for Transjordan. <laughs> so two militia here because that was supposed to be backing up that attack later on. So that does, you know, that the, you know, have something to throw around later on. Okay, that's the plan. Um, Okie dokes. So one attack here. Now, so seven infantry, one fighter against whatever three three regular fighters from the Soviets if they choose to scramble to that position. So that's what's happening there. Unfortunately, I won't be able to see what the outcome is of this battle until then. So I need to kind of watch his video and then collect for my income later on. So that will have to wait until he shows up to it. So I'm only doing one die roll, which is going to be here. So... <clears throat> There's going to be two submarines having at each other. I'm going to do white for defender, black for attacker. Okay. So I have white for the defender, blue for my sub, black for my destroyer. Well, that's not quite on camera, but there you go. 
So misses all around. Four for the the defense, four for the attack, and nine for the the destroyer. Down two. So I have a hit, two hits, and so his submarine is gone. Now my apologies for not being on screen before. I get absorbed with certain things, and yeah, unfortunately. So there it is. That is. Um, we have increased our income up to six, and the Japanese income is now at twenty-two. So all in all, the Japanese are slowly shrinking due to the combined efforts across the globe of pretty much everybody. <laughs> everybody putting in their effort. Non-combat. So non-combat, we're going to move this cavalry here to Transjordan. And we are going to be moving this unit off of Maritime Air Patrol to Mauritania. And we're going to be moving... Yeah. Yeah, that's what's occurring. So we're going to be moving one of these dudes, one of this aircraft, I should say. You know what? We might actually need to be in this position. Um, no, we don't. We don't. I'm pretty sure we don't. Yeah, this... Yeah, I'm thinking because these Italians could attack here at the capital and the capital could collapse. So I do need to keep an eye on that as well. So that's my hesitation. That's why I'm delaying as I'm thinking through this. But I think I'm going to be fairly safe here, and I'm going to just send this over there. If we lose our capital, no big deal. We'll establish a new capital in a more opportune place with a little bit better positioning. Somewhere like northern Algeria. It's not going to hurt us that bad. Okay, so here we're going to do some non-combat, and we can rail this unit here to Morocco. And I think that's about it. We're railing to Morocco, just in case those Italians cause us some grief. I know that leaves this exposed, so maybe we should actually, you know what, we'll just do it like this. One unit Morocco and cavalry here in northern Algeria, and Tunisia will have one infantry. So that's what's occurring there. Radio. Now place unit face. We're actually going to place some units here. Just to be a major thorn in the side, we're going to be placing two infantry down south. And we're going to be placing one militia here in Mauritania. And that is that, people. That takes care of the free French turn. Now, unfortunately, like I said before, it's hard to see what kind of income I'm going to have. I spent this all. But now we are back at... We'll have six bucks income. Possibly eight if we take out Iraq. And my opponent does not scramble. We'll have to see how he does. If he does decide to scramble, he's going to be stuck in the scramble. And he'll have to fight it out to the bitter end. The defender can't retreat, so even if he scramble, he still can't retreat from that. So that could be a factor in it. I think that takes care of everything, guys. Thank you all for watching, and check out Panzer King's channel next for the Italians, and see where they go, see what they do, see if they're going to launch an attack, see if they're going to maintain their peace for a little bit, and, well, generally, keep being an enigma. <laughs> Thanks all for watching. Cheers! Oh, so you stuck around, and I'm going to talk to you now a little bit about rules. So here we have the situation here in Korea. We have the we have the USSR coming from the north and the CCP from the west, I believe it would be, yeah, the west. The question is, can they attack at the same time? <laughs> that may seem obvious, or it may not seem obvious to you. Now, the Commonwealth, they share a turn, and they can all attack at the same time. But keep in mind, the Commonwealth, they all share a tech tree. You know, they share whatever one whatever one nation works on, the other one gets it as well. You don't roll separately for wartime economy for each nation. You all just get one roll that you divvy up amongst yourself as much as you want. So the Commonwealth is basically one entity split into multiple sections. The CCP and the Communists, they don't share a tech tree. You know, if uh, the CCP worked on technology and got themselves wartime economy, they wouldn't have to share one with the uh, Russians. They'd get their own separate thing. But they can still attack together. Now, I don't know where it says in the rules, and I'm not bringing this up to kind of question the rules whatsoever. I'm just telling you, telling you how it is. <laughs> so they can attack together. Now the question is, can the KMT and the Americans attack together? No, they can't. Even though they share the same kind of relationship as the CCP and the Russians, um, since the KMT is a minor power, they can't, it appears that they can't move and attack at the same time as the Americans. So that's interesting to note as well. Also note that we still have one Soviet cavalry left in China, so therefore the the common turn um, victory points is still at 17, so that's where that resides. Now, let's get to another question. The Soviets and the CCP can attack here. 
So in my pondering about debate on strategy, what I was going to do, I was thinking, what if I built a fortified line here for 10 bucks? Not expensive, I know. And one here for 10 bucks. Again, pretty expensive. Um, but then I thought, you know what? That's pointless. I only need one. I only need one fortified line. Uh, and then I'll be protected on all borders if I'm attacked. As long as one unit comes from this direction, I'm protected on all other borders. Uh, because I get a plus two defense bonus. It doesn't say, you know, defense on only the border that, you know, that's being attacked by the Soviets. As long as one unit comes from here, it doesn't matter what the CCP do, I can still be covered here. The only reason I build a second fortified line, and it doesn't even need to be on that border, I could put it up here against Japan. Well, actually, no, I do need to put it here in this case, is I get those two artillery strikes. So uh, one artillery at five, another artillery at five, first strike, they're embedded in the fortification. So not bad, right? You know, I could have them here, get those extra artillery, but theoretically, to get that bonus for my infant, or for my land units here, I only need one across the border being attacked. So the thought was, uh, is it better to build one here or there? And that's a judgment call that a person can have either way. If you expect a Soviet attack or more Soviet attack, either way, they wouldn't be able to get me unless both of them come at me. So I could just build one, thereby saving myself some money. So that's another little fun fact of how things go. <laughs> All right, what else is there to add to you? I think those are about it, the only kind of interesting facts that have shown up lately. But yeah, fun fact, let me know what your comments on that is and what your thoughts are. I'm curious to see what you have to say. Cheers.